other side, uh, as Joe said, my name is Kate Smith, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm a Marine Renewable Energy Advisor with Natural Resources Wales, and really the, the focus of my talk today is, um, you know, we've heard a lot from um, James and Claire there about plans for the demo zones, but from my perspective, um, the challenges that the demonstration zones present to us in um, achieving their successful implementation, but also the opportunities that they provide um, with a the focus there on the opportunities. So I wasn't really sure if all of the people attending the seminar would be actually familiar with who Natural Resources Wales are. So before I launch into my talk, I thought it was worth just introducing NRW. So uh, we formed in April 2013 um, by an am amalgamation of previous bodies that, that performed the similar functions. So our purpose is to ensure that the natural resources of Wales are sustainably managed, used and enhanced now and in the future. So we work, with, um, we work to support the Welsh economy by enabling the sustainable use of natural resources to support jobs and enterprise. And we help business and developers to understand and consider environmental limits when they make important decisions. So to put that into plain English, in terms of our role in the marine uh, renewable energy sector, we've actually got a dual, dual role here. So um, on one side of NRW, we're the statutory advisor on uh, natural heritage issues. So for those of you who may be familiar with working in Scotland, we perform the function that Scottish natural heritage do. Um, and that's the side of NRW that I'm based on, the side that looks at working with developers and business to advise on environmental and natural heritage issues. Then on the other side of NRW, we're also um, the licensing authority for marine licenses and any necessary European protected species licenses. So they're the two arms of NRW that relate to marine energy. And I've got colleagues here in the audience today on the representing the marine permitting side of NRW. So to get back to the, uh, the network of UK wave and tidal demonstration zones, um, I think you're probably all familiar now. We've got six UK demonstration zones, um, and these zones introduced the concept of these third-party managers. Um, so the, the overall idea, really, uh, behind these zones, as, um, as was mentioned by Crown Estate this morning, is to facilitate and accelerate the sustainable development of the wave and tidal stream sectors. Um, but actually, the implementation of these zones carries with it a huge amount of um, challenge, but also opportunity. So, on the challenging side of things, from an environmental perspective, uncertainties about environmental impacts and difficulties with site surveys are going to continue to present a challenge to consenting. And, I, you know, it would be unrealistic of me to stand up here and say that it was going to be a smooth process through the consenting um, process for these demo zones. So, th that's a big challenge for us. But, on the flip side of that, having this network of demonstration zones, it could be an opportunity to collaborate at a UK or a Welsh level to address some of these challenges. So rather than working in isolation to try and, and tackle some of these difficult issues, maybe there's opportunities to work together more efficiently and more effectively. So I'm going to talk through some of the examples and um, ways that the demonstration zones might offer some opportunities here. But they, they might include things like um, facilitating collaborative working on looking at consenting procedures and issues. Um, Again, we've heard from James and Claire already about the, the consideration they're giving to the approach to consenting in the zones. Um, you know, and the, that, that's the, all of the UK demonstration zone managers are going to be going through those same thought processes and same procedures to think about how they want to go about the consenting process. So why not look at trying to look at some of those issues collaboratively? The demonstration zones also, um, we feel, provide an opportunity to build in learning objectives for environmental and technical engineering aspects. And I think the, the, the real opportunity here is to combine the two, not see them as two distinct issues, and, um, and, and build those in at a very early stage to the demonstration zone's objectives. Um, they also encourage shared responsibility for improving the environmental evidence base. Often uh, we, we talk to developers and, and they feel that, you know, that the early the front runners and the pioneers are, are shouldering the burden really on behalf of the whole sector and it's really you know fir first up hits it in the wallet for having to do a lot of the the environmental research um, so you know having these demonstration zones it, it, it could encourage a, a shared responsibility for gathering that data 
and improving our understanding. And, um, and finally, um, you know, they could provide a focus we, um, for the, the offshore renewable energy, or GIP, ocean energy program um, that, that we know um, Joe and his colleagues at Marine Space and Aquaterra um, have, have got the Secretariat for recently. So I just go into some of those issues in, in a little more detail, um, just to run through some of the, um, the challenges but the opportunities as well. So, James and Claire have already talked about the, the consideration for how they might like to go about consenting within the zones. Um, and that could be anything from individual project consents for individual devices within zones, um, right up through to a Rochdale envelope based approach um, with a very broad um, design envelope allowing for multiple different technologies at multiple different scales within the zone. Or it could be something in between. Um, that, you know, there might be an approach of having a, an overarching Electricity Act license, but having individual uh, marine licenses for projects and individual deployments within zones. Um, so, so, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount of variation and different ways that the third party managers could approach consenting within these zones. Um, and that's, that's a challenge. That's going to be a challenge for all of us to deal with. But the, you know, there's an opportunity here to actually work together on tackling some of these difficult issues. And I, you know, the, I think the demonstration zones offer an opportunity to, to work together to establish some best practice procedures. Why reinvent the wheel six times across the UK when we're all kind of you know, we're all working for the same aim and the same aspirations? Let's see if some of these difficult things, like how do we define a Rochdale envelope for a demonstration zone? You know, why not why not look to do some collaborative working on that? across the UK or, or just within Wales, within the Welsh demonstration zones to, to work together rather than everybody just reinventing the wheel each time. Um, and then also relating to the consenting process, there's an opportunity here to, um, to think about appropriate and proportionate evidence bases for the consenting regime. Um, and I'll go on to a, that issue now in a little bit more detail. So the evidence base for consenting, there's, there's a lot of talk about that um, and, and quite often in the past the um, Countryside Council for Wales, as my predecessor and um, NRW now, have, have been accused of asking for the earth, moon and stars to inform consenting processes. We place an awful lot of um, requirement on developers to go out and collect a huge amount of data to inform the environmental impact assessment processes that underpin the consents that they need to get devices in the water. Um, this is because um, these assessment processes need to be based on robust evidence. Um, th this is why there's this evidence need. But we all know that undertaking surveys in these areas is really challenging. It's, it's actually really difficult, um, as you know, um, to go out into these areas and gather data. Um, so how do, how do we balance that? How do we ensure that the cost and effort of gathering this environmental data is actually proportionate to the risk? And, and also added to that, how can we be sure and make sure that the, the data that are being gathered will be fit for purpose and will usefully inform the impact assessment? So that they're all going to be challenges that we're facing when we talk about consenting within the demo zones. But again, you know, there's opportunities to work together here to address some of those, those challenges. Can we work together to develop a shared evidence base for consenting rather than WavePub gathering their own evidence base and more of Lyson and Mento Mon collecting their own? You know, are there things we can do better together um, than we might as the sum of our parts? Can we develop some best practice for site surveys and environmental assessment processes? There's already quite a lot of work being done up in Scotland and Marine Scotland and SNH published some site survey guidance for wave and tidal, but um, experience has shown that those methods don't always work in wave and tidal sites. You know, that, that it's not foolproof guidance and it needs to be tweaked. Um, and we, we've struggled in Wales with developments to date to work out the best way to go out and collect data that will be useful to inform environmental impact assessment. So can we work together to develop some best practice? Um, and again, getting back to this point. Sorry, Kate, I think we're getting close to OK, the right, I'll rattle through the last <laughs> few. So uh, potential benefits of collaborative surveys and sharing data. Um, and again, improving the evidence base. The, the key gaps in the evidence base are, are well documented in the Crown Estate Aquaterra report. Um, 
and then there's other evidence needs to inform consenting processes. So the, the site characterization work that informs consenting processes isn't always exactly the same as the key R&D issues that Aquaterra um, identified in their report. So um, opportunities. Um, the demo zones offer the opportunity to undertake research alongside developments and actually promote, promote the idea that this research and development is actually of benefit to the industry. You know, have, having research and um, R&D associated with demonstration zones shouldn't be seen as a hindrance to the demo zones being a success. Actually, you know, that it's a massive selling point. And if we can use the demo zones to increase the evidence base, then that, that's going to benefit not only the demo zones, but the, the wider sector at large. Um, shared responsibility for improving the evidence base. You know, it could be fairer, more effective, and more likely to get funding. You know, we're all living in a world where, where money is scarce, so let's work together to maximize our chances of being successful in funding bids. Um, the demo zones could provide a focus for the delivery of Orgip Ocean Energy. Uh, we know what the R&D issues are, but um, you know, the, the demo zones could provide a real opportunity to have a series of sites around the UK to duplicate where necessary research, but not duplicate unnecessarily have a well-designed, coordinated program. Um, the demo zones could help align academia's work programs to industry needs. Um, and they, you know, they're an opportunity to develop to best practice and demonstrate really how industry regulators, advisors, and academia can work together to a common goal. So concluding points, um, the, the demo zones offer a chance to, um, to work more effectively through a partnership approach, deal, deal with issues collaboratively rather than independently. Um, we can share learning and experience, work together to develop best practice or guidance where that's appropriate. Um, that they encourage coordination of research and evidence gathering programs, which you know, we know that, that the power of those research programs is much greater if they're, they're well designed and, and, and not kind of focused on too small an area. Um, it's an opportunity to complement rather than duplicate work across Wales and the wider UK. And it's an opportunity to promote Wales really as an exemplar to the rest of the world on how we can all work together to, to achieve, um, you know, accelerate and facilitate the sustainable development of the sector. So I'll leave you with my key question, which I hope might, might uh, stimulate some discussion. Are there things that we can do better together than we can as the sum of our parts? And do, do these demonstration zones offer us that opportunity? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thanks very much for that, Kate. Um, thanks for an.